Hello, my darlings. Today we're doing something I haven't done in a while, and that is re-reading one of my stories. This one is the noises she makes in her bed. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. Um, as you know, my rereads can be considered uh, the second draft, so it is slightly different to the original, so that you can enjoy the story all over again. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you that uh, you can support me by watching the video until the end, liking or disliking and commenting something down below, and sharing the video around. The more people see it, the more money I can make to spend it on the Gacha and Genshin Impact, because I really want Kiki. Please, please support me. I want Kiki. Please help my Gacha addiction. Thank you. Also, I have a Patreon and the merch store. Links down in the description. And to get you some extra, extra encouragement to support me, here is the cute animal picture of the day. And before we dive right into the story, if you're new here and think I deserve it, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to join my beautiful darling doll army. Now please, enjoy the show. Three, two, one. By now, Bakugo could pinpoint it, a sound that hurt her soul deeply, a sound that kept him awake, filling his mind with thoughts he tried to suppress. He looked at the wall that separated your room with his. Thanks to an error in floor plans, his room was located right next to the girl's wing of the dorms. However, for sheer luck, it was him who got this so-called good spot, as Kaminari put it. Due to the chance of him seeing one of the girls in underwear, was ever so slightly higher. As if he cared about trivial things like that. What he did care about was the fact that you were the one next to his room. Bakugo had had a crush on you for about three months now. The moment he had realized it himself was when you beat him during a sparring match. Your quirk blink allowed you to teleport short distances, which had allowed you to skillfully dodge most of his attacks. What had been different that day for him was that he didn't get mad once you beat him. He was feeling happy for you. And he never did something like that. He wanted to talk to you, be around you, protect you. And whenever he reached that point in his train of thought, a sour clump came up his throat. Maybe he couldn't protect you if he was beaten by you. Deep down he knew that his flawed personality would get hiccups when it came to that. He looked back towards your wall. The sounds were getting more quiet, but more frequent. This was a 50-50 chance it was about to end, or get worse. He had noticed how stressed you were shortly before this became normal. You had problems in school. Math was becoming too complex for you. And once both French and German were introduced as extra languages to learn, due to their importance in quirk history, Germany was the first country with the least amount of registered villains, thanks to a strong cooperation between a powerful police force and pro-heroes. And France was the leading country in mutation quirk acceptance. But after these two lessons were added on Class 1A schedule, it was just downhill for you. Of course he could help you. 
and he really wanted to. But there was this mental block that prevented him from being nice to you. Or anyone else for that matter. He frowned. The noises you made in your bed were getting louder again. In a way, he was glad that your other neighbor was Momo. The rich girl had a radio which played white noise to help her sleep. And therefore was the reason why she couldn't hear you. Bakugo, on the other hand, needed absolute silence to sleep. Maybe that was why he was so grumpy all the time. In his childhood, his parents were quite loud at night. Not always, of course, but often enough to ruin his sleep schedule. He yawned and rolled on his side. Maybe he should keep ignoring you. He would tell someone if it got too serious. Wouldn't you? Suddenly a feeling of dread overcame him. He needed to scream loud. Was it you who caused this? With both hands he grabbed his pillow. Why was it so moist? Why was he sweating so badly? After pressing the soft, wet pillow into his face, a wail escaped him. Hearing you do this to yourself for days must have taken a toll on him. He threw the pillow against his window. This was enough. He jumped off his bed and began searching his drawers. Katsuki needed some encouragement beforehand. Like most students, he had a secret stash of Lunchra's pink soda. The stuff was rare and expensive. Lunchrush himself only sold them in small cans on Fridays in the cafeteria. It was some sort of fake scarcity thing. A food-based hero had a fable for limiting supplies of his food and drink. While this did lead to a bigger general offering, it also led to many favorite foods already being gone before he would reach the cafeteria. He took three long sips of the strawberry-flavored sugary drink and felt its rejuvenating effects almost immediately. After hiding the can back in his drawer, he left his room. The hallway was eerily quiet. The curfew bots that roamed each building would avoid the hallways to allow students to at least go use the bathroom at night. With quiet steps, he approached your door. Why was he feeling so intimidated? With a shaking hand, he gave three careful knocks. No answer. Should he just enter? Would it ruin his chances with you if he did? If so, he could never forgive himself. And then he saw light appear from underneath your door, then two small shadows. The door opened, and there you stood. The light of your room behind you, hiding your face behind your shadow. What do you want? Your voice was calm. Too calm. Why are you crying? He mumbled, and your toes curled up. Did he hear you? Did he hear you cry before? This was embarrassing. Can I come in? You wanted to say no. He really did. But the only thing that left your mouth was a quiet yes. Being alone in your room with Bakugo was... Awkward. He sat down on the bed next to you, his hands stored in the pockets of his sweatpants. You two didn't say anything for about ten minutes. Thinking. 
until he finally spoke up. Why are you crying? When you didn't respond, he continued. I want to be number one hero. Katsuki sighed. And a hero is supposed to protect people, specifically friends and strangers. He put emphasis on the end. When a hero is unable to protect the people he cares about, how is he supposed to protect strangers? He looked down at his feet. Look, you don't have to tell me what's wrong with you. And I must admit, I hate to say that. Bakugo gulped and looked at you. If it were for any other person, I would just say that I honestly don't care what your problem is as long as you can deal with it yourself. You were starting to get a clue of where this was going, but you were too emotional right now to respond. He waited another minute before going on. But I do care. I care a lot about you. Bakugo sighed. I've now been listening to your wailing for a few days now. I know when you start. I know when you stop. And... I... I know when it's about to get worse. You blushed in embarrassment. Why were you such a failure? You don't have to tell me. I know how it feels having problems with something and your inner pig just keeps stopping you. Again he paused. Wait. Was he tearing up? People will tell you to be better than that. To fight it. Tell you you're talented when in reality you aren't. Tell you to get over yourself to grow up. To be a better person. To become a fucking adult. Basically emotional crap that is supposed to convince you to lose all emotion and to function as they tell you to function. Disregarding the damage you will receive when fighting a battle you cannot win on your own. He gave a sad chuckle. <laughs> the trick is not to get over yourself. The trick is to trick yourself in going around it. To not fight it, but to make a large curve around it. People will tell you you aren't improving, but deep down, you know you are. And depending on the size of that pig, it can take longer or be over quick. He gulped. My pig is that I lose my temper very quickly, so I guess you could call it a hog. Another chuckle escaped him, this time much darker. In truth, people will never fully understand how you feel, and no matter what you do, they will tell you that your progress is too slow. But any progress is good. Finally, you spoke up. What are you trying to tell me, Katsuki? I like you a lot, he said. I want you to stop crying. I want to tell you that you're not alone. We all fight with bad thoughts. I like you too. You sniffled. Then... Let me help you with the pig. Carefully. Slowly. Not head on. Feeling a sudden surge of emotions you clung on to him. Arms wrapped around his waist. Face buried in his lap. He 
didn't react immediately. But he also didn't move away. Eventually his hand simply reached for your head as he began softly stroking through your hair. <laughs> 